This is your Classical Break, your daily dose of classical music. I'm Tyler Alderson, and today we'll be listening to the second and third movements of Paul Tafanel's Wind Quintet. Wind ensembles were particularly common in the 18th century, with groups called harmonies being a staple in many noble courts. Comprised of oboes, horns, clarinets, and bassoons, they'd play dance music, selection from popular operas and ballets, and some more serious fare from the top composers of the day. But they went into a decline at the beginning of the 19th century, and by the time Tafanel came along, woodwinds were mainly thought of as a section in an orchestra, without much repertoire in their own right. So he decided to start up a society aimed at promoting woodwind chamber music, hoping to bring back some of the prestige that had been lost throughout the years. You can get a good idea of wind instruments standing when Tafanel launched his group from the article about its founding, which says, quote, The wind instruments of the concert society have just hoisted the flag of mutiny against the strings, to whom they have always been subservient. Plenty of people played and wrote string quartets, works for string orchestra, showpieces for violins and cellos, and all kinds of other music for strings. Meanwhile, Tafanel found that even pieces for wind ensembles by great composers like Beethoven and Mozart were being neglected, and the wind students at his conservatory were falling behind his peers in both technique and repertoire. When asked about why he was starting a wind ensemble, giving the numerous problems facing woodwind players, he replied, quote, It is precisely because the study of those instruments that make up the wind section is no longer what it was in the past, because the appearance in a serious concert of a virtuoso wind player has become extremely rare, that we wish to react against such a totally unjustifiable neglect. Whatever the motivation, the Society's concerts were an almost immediate success. Tafanel was pretty shrewd in the way he set up the programs, resurrecting woodwind music from the old masters and pairing it with new music, including his own pieces. So even though most of the music was new to potential audiences, many of the composers weren't, making it easier to get people in the door. The first concert was so well attended that they had to move the second one to a larger venue, one of the most prestigious chamber music halls in Paris. And by the time Tafanel stepped down from the society in 1893, he had inspired a new generation of musicians and composers to take woodwinds a bit more seriously. One of the more popular groupings was the Wind Quintet, and this piece in particular was played to great acclaim in multiple concerts over the years. The two movements we'll be listening to today are a great contrasting pairing, showing off a lot of the possibilities of the instruments in the ensemble. The slow second movement starts out with a lovely horn solo and proves that winds can be just as tender and charming as their string counterparts, while the feisty final movement harkens back to when woodwinds were the go-to if you needed some party music in a royal court. Here's the Sonny Venturum Wind Quintet with the second and third movements of Tafanel's Wind Quintet.
Woodwinds have such a fun tonal quality, something that isn't matched by any of the other instruments that you hear in an orchestra, and I, for one, am quite glad that Toffanel decided to take up their cause and get some more serious music into the standard repertoire. Thanks to the Sonny Venturum Wind Quintet for putting that up on museopen.org, and thank you for listening. If you have the chance, please rate and review this podcast wherever it is that you're getting it. I'm Tyler Alderson, and tomorrow for your classical break, we'll be starting on Brahms' wonderful variations on a theme by Paganini. I'll see you then.